Hi guys, Mikeru here. This is my video on Croesus and this is a starter guide with lots of different tips in it and this is aimed at around 8 man instances. I am going to do a 4 man guide eventually. I've done some 4 man kills but they're definitely not optimal by any means and I want to get, you know, better at the boss and get a more solidified guide for that. This is just going to be an entry level guide for people who are looking to do the boss and get it done, you know, on day of release or the day after or whatever. So let's get right into it. Obviously, Croesus is the third installment of the Elder God Wars, and he looks really cool. The area is very, very nice, and it's a really enjoyable boss. I was pleasantly surprised about this skilling boss. I'm going to break this guide up and first talk about just the things you need to avoid. Most of it is very self-explanatory, but there is a couple of things that can help you out and some tips that I'm going to give you. First of all, every single mechanic that you get given can be fully dodged. The best way to interpret when something is being thrown at you is watching Croesus in the middle. You will see him do an animation of throwing his arms up or even throwing balls right at you, and you can start preemptively moving and dodge those balls early. Worst comes to the worst, if you're a little bit late, you'll take maybe one tick of stat drain, and you can just use a super restore dose whenever you feel like it to restore those stats back up. You want to avoid getting your stats drained as much as you can because every time your stats get drained, Croesus gains Enrage. The more you get your stats drained, the more Enrage he gets and if he gets to 100%, the fight is over and he wins. You don't actually die in this fight so there's no death costs but if he gets to 100% Enrage, you have to start again. And also if any of your stats are drained all the way down, you also, you know, get taken out of the fight. You don't die but you can't continue fighting. So this is why I would always advise keybinding a restore pot and using it as much as you can whenever your stats are drained to stop yourself from being removed from the fight. There's a couple of smoke cloud kind of mechanics where it puts a cloud underneath of you of different colors. You always just sidestep those and you're good to go. Another one is one that starts off looking like a puff of smoke and then it summons a fairy ring. If you're standing in that puff of smoke when the fairy ring spawns, it will teleport you away. So you need to make sure you always stand out of that fairy ring whenever you see that puff of smoke. Another one is where you get rooted in the spot and this one is literally unavoidable. So this one you can't even dodge. If you get hit by this, you're rooted. Your teammates can free you from these roots, but if you have any logs on you, you can free yourselves from the root by clicking underneath of you. Protean logs come in super handy here as they stack and they are really, really useful. Although if you don't have Protean logs, you can just take a couple of like magic logs or something with you and you'll be good to go with a couple of logs. The last one is a ball that he shoots out. This one can be dodged, but if you don't dodge it, it will stun you. This stun on the other hand can be freedomed. It stuns you for about five seconds, but you can freedom before that and get on with whatever you are doing. It doesn't do any damage. It doesn't drain your stats at all or whatever. So, you know, face tanking that and freedom in isn't the worst thing. And then the last mechanic I want to talk about that drains your stats is a little fungus spore that he spawns. He throws them out and they land somewhere close to you and then they follow you and lock on to you. As you can see here, I ran into it for some reason and it drained my stats a hell of a lot. Each of my stats got drained 24, which is huge. So definitely be careful of these blobs and never run into them. And if you do, instantly restore your stats back up with a super restore. A lot of times they're very easy to avoid though, thankfully they get stuck on objects, so if you're harvesting from your starting node, the main node, or you're repairing a statue or something, sometimes they'll get trapped behind it and you can just chill and continue doing what you're doing. Then finally, the last mechanic that happens at 2 minutes 25 into the fight is these energy spores in the center. These energy spores in the center, if you click them, they have a shared health pool and you need a fair few people dealing with these energy spores to make sure that they are dealt with and destroyed before their adrenaline bar reaches zero. Otherwise, Croesus will gain a ton of enrage. You don't want to give Croesus that much enrage. It is very, very bad if these are not stopped. So you want to watch your boss timer and as soon as it hits 225, you want to go to the middle and get rid of these. And that is it for the fundamental mechanics. They are the basic mechanics that you're going to deal with throughout the fight. That will be thrown at you the whole time and your stats will be drained if you don't deal with those mechanics correctly. If you deal with those mechanics correctly, you won't even need to worry about your stats getting drained because you can dodge them and you'll be fine. I've put a map of the overview of Croesus so I can speak about the boss in a somewhat easy way and hopefully an understandable way. As you can see, the Northwest Quadrant is the Hunter one, the Northeast is the Fishing, Southeast is the Mining, and Southwest is the Woodcutting. We're doing it with an eight-man group, right? So you want to put two people in every single quadrant. 
if you're doing a public lobby, you want to communicate with your team and just say who's going where before you start. So you want to divide it up to two people in every quadrant. If you have more than eight people, you can get some extra people in each quadrant, but even them out accordingly. Then you want to start your encounter and you want to gather 18 of the resources in your quadrant. And you want to gather it mostly from your main node, which will be one of the dead bosses. Because I was doing Hunter, my dead boss was the Dagonoff King, and you want to harvest from the shiny node, the one that's like glistening. This will give you a ton of progress towards actually depleting the node. There is a little extra bar above the node, as you can see on top of the Dagonoff. When this bar is full, you'll fully deplete this resource, and you need to do that in order to deal a decent amount of damage at Croesus at the end. So make sure you fully deplete this with your teammate. And if you need any extra resources, you can gather them from the dead bodies nearby, which are just right next to it. You actually only need 15 of the resource, but the reason why I say take 18 is because if you mess up, some of your resources can become rotten. And when your resources are rotten, they cannot be used for the specific purpose. So just because some mistakes may happen, it's good to get over the 15. Otherwise, you have to go all the way back if you make a mistake, which is not good. Once you gather your 18 resources, you want to move across anti-clockwise. As there's two of you in each quadrant, you're going to have to have one person go once anti-clockwise. So if I started at the woodcutting one, I would go to the mining one. And the second person in the group would have to rotate twice anti-clockwise and deposit their 15 and wait at the statue. So again, you want to communicate this beforehand. So which person is going to go once and which person is going to go twice anti-clockwise and deposit their stuff in each statue. When rotating anti-clockwise, you want to make sure you're not taking any damage from the stuff in between the actual like nodes that you're harvesting from. With this field that I'm at right now, you can see that there is a clear path right now in the middle of this. I've drawn a lovely little red squiggle to show where the clear path would be. You could run through this clear path and take no stat drain whatsoever. But a nice easy way to combat it is just go down to the bottom of the stairs, surge and bladed dive across, and you're already over and you take zero damage. You want to make sure you're at the bottom of the stairs when you surge and bladed dive, otherwise you will take a bit of damage on the other side because you won't travel quite far enough if you do it too early. But if you don't have bladed dive or you're a skiller without surge, you can just follow this line and you'll be absolutely okay. That's how you deal with this one. Then there is another one that you have to deal with, and that's a lot of mushrooms. To deal with these mushrooms, you want to climb over whichever ones are sparkling, whichever ones are shiny. If you go over one that isn't shiny, you will take stat drain, and it will rot one of your resources. So you always want to go over those sparkly mushrooms for a nice, safe travel, making sure you have all your resources intact by doing that. And obviously, you don't want to get your stats drained because it increases the enrage and gets you closer to losing the fight. So the reason why I said deposit your 15 items to the statue and wait is because you'll have another teammate that's also rotating round with a different resource that they're going to put into the statue. It's always once or twice anti-clockwise no matter what platform you start at and you'll meet up with your teammate at the specific statue. So me and my teammate both deposited into this statue which then allows you to repair it. So you want to repair your statue fully and then pray at it to reveal the middle node. Underneath the boss is skirt or whatever you want to call it. Underneath Croesus in general. As soon as that node underneath of him is able to be harvested from, get harvesting and get killing him. And if everyone does this effectively, you should be repairing your statues and praying at them around the same time. For every statue that you repair and pray at, it extends the duration that the middle is open for, which then allows you to literally just kill it outright if you do four statues repaired and prayed at. Worst comes to the worst, if there's a couple of people slacking, once it's just about to close, you can just bladed dive into their quadrant, help repair their statue, and it will reopen and you can finish it off. But as long as everyone does this smoothly, it should all happen all simultaneously at the same time and it will be done easy peasy. One last thing I want to talk about linking into that final part underneath Croesus. If you zoom in your camera, you'll see these little like speckles of different colors, little circle spore things that rise up. The colors of these matter and they actually allow you to do additional things to the boss. If these spores come up and they're white and you click, it will deal 500 poison damage to the boss. If they come up and they're green, it will deal 1000 poison damage to the boss when you click. If they come up and they're red and you click, it will heal the boss for 2.5k. 
Do you want to make sure you're clicking when it's white and green spores, but not red? Otherwise, you'll be hindering the team by clicking then. Now I want to talk through a full kill and just give a breakdown of what I did during the kill and talk through it, help you out, and hopefully it will give you a nice insight on how to get some successful kills. Let's do it. One thing I do want to say before I start, this method is the same for literally everyone in the instance. I'm currently starting at the hunter spot, but even if you're starting at the mining or woodcutting spots, it would work exactly the same way. At the start, you want to deplete that main node, the one that is the Dagonoff for me or whatever it will be for you. You and your teammate will be able to deplete that load pretty quickly. Remember to keep dodging the things that it's throwing at you throughout the fight. And if you do get hit, use a super restore to restore your stats so that you don't get kicked out of the fight for having too low stats and too much drain. You want to get 18 of the resource. If you don't have 18 by the time it's depleted, harvest the dead people to the side and get yourself up to 18 of whatever resource you are gathering. Once you have about 18 of your resource, you want to rotate once or twice anti-clockwise, whatever you chose to do. I personally am rotating once anti-clockwise, so I put my stuff in the first statue, which holds 15 of my items. Then I need to wait for my teammate to come round with 15 of their items from the fishing spot. My teammate will go round a second time and do the exactly same thing for the next statue. Once my teammate joins me, it's super simple. Obviously, we continue to dodge those mechanics throughout and just keep, you know, not getting hit by any of the clouds or any of the things that he's throwing out to us. Once you're together with your teammate who has also put their 15 resources in, that will be when you can repair the statue. You want to repair the statue as quickly as possible. As it is 2 minutes 25, it has spawned the energy fungus. So you need to go into the middle and make sure you kill that so he doesn't gain in rage. So if that ever spawns, make sure you're on top of that. I then went back to repairing the statue. Once the statue was fully repaired, because my teammates were also repairing their statues and we were all making good time, I prayed at the statue and it opened up the middle. Everyone prayed at their statues, which makes that middle stay open for a very long time. And then we just camp the middle and just harvest from it until it dies. It is literally that simple once you put everything together. It is not too difficult, and once everyone knows the mechanics, I think it will be very, very easy and smooth, even in public lobbies. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. I'll try and reply where I can. I will be having a four-man guide out once I get better at that, and then also I will have XP rates for the nodes outside, and I will also look into the XP rates of this boss and stuff as well, now that I can actually kill it efficiently, and we'll see how things go. Hopefully you did enjoy. Give it a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content. All related to RuneScape 3. And until next time, see ya.